Hi all everybody. Welcome here in Sicily in our school. Our school is at Edmondo de Amici's from Randazzo. And I'm glad to also uh, guest you here in this school. Uh, today we are going to present you what Sicily is and what Randazzo is. Here are all my students that are able to speak with you and I ask them why they like to live here in Sicily and they will answer with their own reason. Now we start with Faustina. She is one of my students in uh, the first C in this institute. Now, Faustina, we start presenting Sicily from the ancient Greek. So, Faustina, what purpose did the Greek have in uh, campaign Sicily? The Greeks did not arrive in Sicily with the main purpose of conquering, but rather with the intent of finding new land to inhabit. The northeast area of Sicily was settled by the Phoenicians for a very long period. There was no conflict with the Greeks for many years. The history of Greek Sicily is linked to Syracuse, in fact, from the first period up to the Roman era. It was the history of this province and its Tartans that affected the inter-Greek period on the island. Among the many testimonies of the Greek sea in Sicily, we have the archaeological park, in all probability the first Greek visitors in Sicily, where the merchants who opened the doors to the greatest migratory current. The first settlements on the island were in order Naxos, Lentini, Catania, then followed by Syracuse, Zankel and Megariblea. The foundation of Gela marks the end of the first Greek migration to Sicily. There is even evidence that there have been Greeks settlements within Sicilian communities such as Gramichel and Morgantina. Difference Valley of the Temple Sagrigento, the Archaeological Park of Selinunte Castelvetrano, the Archaeological Park of Neapolis in Syracuse where we find the Year of Dioniso, Asian Theatre of Taormina, Asian Theatre of Catania. Okay, we've just heard about the Greek in Sicily and now we go on with the Romans in Sicily. When and what the Roman uh, conquest Sicily? Uh, Sicily was conquered at the end of the First Punic War, subtracting it from Cartaginese, being the first land conquered behind the Italia Peninsula. It was considered the first Roman province. The Romans conquered Sicily for strategic reasons uh, because it was the closest land to conquer North Africa and for economic reasons because it was a land rich in groups. In fact, Sicilians paid the tribute to the empire in grain. The administration of Sicily was entrusted to a proconsul of the emperor who administered it with a landowner economy. During this period, ro the Romans uh, transformed some Greek theatres uh, that they uh, called all business for a performance. Romans' creation are also the amphitheater of Syracuse, Syracuse the Odeon of uh, Catania and Taormina, the Naumachi of Tarmina and Rimanes of Thermal Baths and uh, Air Forums. Uh, there are also exemplars of uh, domestic architecture. Okay, now after we heard about the conquest that people made in Sicily, now we want to speak about the beauties of Sicily. And so we are going to interview for this way our students, Erika, what do you know about Sicily beauties? Sicily has many beauties and including numerous islands and the beautiful coast and beaches on the Mediterranean. Among the most important and beautiful islands of Sicily, there are the Aeolian Islands, an archipelago made up of Stromboli, Vulcano, Lipari, Salina, Licudi, Filicudi and Panarea. These islands rise on volcanoes, including that of Stromboli, which is still active. 
On this island there are uh, very uh, numerous legends and myths. Other archipelago are, um, are those uh, the Egadis and Pelagis islands. All these islands are located in the Mediterranean Sea. It uh, makes the territory of uh, Sicily um, and its islands um, a very warm and mild territory, especially on, coast, on the coast. This type of climate takes its name from the sea or Mediterranean climate. Uh, these uh, small islands uh, are um, not very inhabited, but they are a tourist destination that has a large number of visitors, especially in summer. The Mediterranean is also a very important summer destination. In fact, many people from northern Italy or abroad come here to take their holidays. And here we are again. Now we are going to speak with Sebastiano, who speaks as for environment, natural beauties in Sicily. And we know that, you know, that our city is a, a small city for, for about 10,000 inhabitants and is surrounded by a lot of green. Sebastiano, how many parks are here in uh, Randazzo? Randazzo is a small village near the Mont Etna, sur uh, surrounded by three very important parks, which are Nebrodi Park, Etna Regional Park and Alcantara River Park. Nebrodi Park form Sicilian uh, Apennines. They overlook the Tyrrhenian Sea. To the north and their southern limit is marked by Alcantara River. It is a river that originates for the Nebrodi at about uh, 1,400 meters and raises the northern part of the chain of Randazzo. Okay, thank you to Sebastiano that gave us some information about uh, the nature in, uh, in Randazzo. And now we are going to interview Luca who speaks us about the Etna Park. Luca, what do you know about Etna Park? The Etna Park Regional Park is a protected area of Sicily. In the summit area uh, is no vegetation, as in one to say, under eight one. There was a erupt, uh, uh, Etna eruption. Only on some slips can uh, found. The Bosnian Pine Park hosts various places to visit uh, as the Cuba of Santa Domenica and the Alcantara uh, Gorges, which are about 25 meters. Okay, here we are now. We speak about Randazzo Medieval. Randazzo is an old medieval city in which there were uh, walls to defend the city and gates to permit the entry of people in the, in the old city. Inside the gate there are the old city now. Uh, outside there are the new cities and the, uh, the new construction. And now we are going to speak with Antonino who speaks about the structure, defensive structure of the city. What defensive structure are visible actually in Randazzo? Randazzo was surrounded by a wall is a symbol of uh, its greatness and power, about uh, three kilometers long from the Swabian era, with uh, eight towers and uh, 12 gates. Today only one, uh, only one tower, Castello Svebo, and four ga gates are still there. Porta Aragonese opens onto the longest stretch of the surviving wall, also known as uh, Porta Deliesio or Porta San Giuliano, or more commonly Porta Musu. Porta San Martino, on a short residual stretch of the wall, is also called Porta uh, Porta Palermo or Porta San Cristoforo. Porta San Giuseppe opens at the top of a short staircase near the place where a church once stood. Porta Pugliese, which opens on the side of the fortress above the Alcantara River. 
Okay, now we are going to speak about myths and legend, because Sicily and Randazzo are rich of this kind of stories. And here about, uh, in this place, specific, specify, there are a lot of legends. And I want to say thanks to EuroTV of Randazzo, because she supports us in uh, each initiative we have uh, for cultural things or for everything we are going to do. Now we hear about this legend and myths from Francesco, students from the first sea of Istituto del Mondo de Amicis. Sicily is a land rich in myths and legends, but above all um, in places that have inspired the birth of fantastic mythological tales. The Cyclops, the Greek goods and the Nymphs are the protagonists of uh, the uh, tales that have been handed down over centuries. Some of uh, the best known legends are uh, Colapesce, the Moros, um, uh, the Morosids, uh, the legend of uh, the Aretura Fontaine, Etna and the Giant Enceladus and many others. Now we are going to speak about Sicily's uh, festivals here in uh, our region. Sicily is a wonderful uh, region in which there are a lot of festivals. Uh, festivals about uh, saints, festival about play, uh, plates, food and other things that we can do here. And now I'm going to interview uh, Mirko who is speaking to us uh, of a particular pa uh, festival here in Sicily. What are you speaking about uh, Mirko? The festivals in Sicily are various, starting from the Trimulero festival in Randazzo. Um, a typical dessert made with cooked wine, uh, walnuts, hazelnuts and a pinch of cinnamon. This dessert is prepared near Christmas. We also have this pistachio festival in Bronte, one of the best pistachios in all of Italy, if not the best pistachio. Uh, can be used both in the dessert and in the dinner making it a king in the kitchen. You go from arancini with pistachio to panette, always creating more uh, tastes. At Ma in Maletto, we find the strawberry festival. They offer free tasting to visitors and make strawberry the cakes to all participants. Local pro uh, products other than strawberries are, are exposed and musical performances and guided tours are held. And here we are inside in one of the b most beautiful church in Randazzo, uh, Santa Maria Church. Uh, Randazzo is also famous because in the past there were here a lot of, ch uh, of churches, now destructed after the Second World War, most of them. But there were uh, about 100 churches here in Randazzo. And then we will hear about this of one of my students to speak about. And uh, this church is really beautiful because inside there are masterpieces of arts that are very important in the history of important uh, picture, uh, painters and important architect that built this church. Uh, you can see the Volta, it's something of fantastic because it's all handmade and whole unpainted. That's why, because we are speaking about our project, our project is, as you know, uh, forgotten jobs and <laughs> crafts. So, what about better than speaking uh, of this kind of hand, handmade arts? Okay, now we are outside of the church of Santa Maria because I want to speak to you and tell you about two legends of this church. The first one is spoken about the, the legend of the chicken, a gold chicken. Do you know the gold chicken? This legend, do you know it? No, I tell you, it's not a problem. Uh, in the past, people believe that the, in this church, in the underground of this church, there are a big, big place. Uh, full of gates and at the end of the gates there is a gold chicken which once a year gives golden eggs at the midnight of Christmas Day the door get open for, for 30 seconds and 
if a, a man can go there and come back in 30 seconds, they can give and take out. Okay, I will tell you about this church. In the olden past, we are speaking about more than 1,300 years ago, there was a young shepherd and was going with these sheep. Here was only country uh, filled. There was nothing here. Where this door is there, in, the, in, in that corner, there was an old cave. And when here come the first invasion in this city, the shepherd goes away and hid himself in this cave. But he couldn't uh, be hidden for forever in this cave. And so he put uh, inside a little statue of a Madonna and turn off, light on, a candle. And he goes away. After many years later, we speak after 100 years later, when people discovered uh, this cave, they found out that the candle was lighting there. And this was a miracle because after 100 years, the candle was there and was lighting. And that's why here was born the, a church, the principal church of Randazzo. Here in Randazzo, we have also many other things that are famous in the world. And one of these is uh, a, a natural product that we produce here in Randazzo. Uh, Gregorio is going to speaking us about it, and we are speaking about wine. What do you know about wine here in Randazzo? The cultivation of vines and winemaking were brought to Sicily by ancient men. In Western Sicily, by uh, the Phoenicians, between the 8th and the 7th uh, centuries before Christ. Instead, in Eastern Sicily, it spread since the, Greek, the time of Greek colonization. Today, the production in Sicily amounts to millions of uh, hectoliters, thanks to about 110,000 uh, hectares to, um, of vineyards. The most common black uh, grape varieties are Nero Davola, originally from uh, southeastern uh, Sicily, and Pericone, widespread in, uh, in the western Sicily. Speaking of white grapes, uh, the most widespread is the uh, Catarato. That is the most widespread uh, uh, white grape variety in Sicily and among the most uh, popular in Italy. Sicily is, uh, is a typical w wine of the Sicilian region and um, it has five types, white, red, rosé, white sparkling wine and the rosé sparkling wine. And after wine that are the drink of the gods, we are going to speak about another uh, point, uh, Im important point here in Sicily. And we are speaking about sweeties. Sweeties are something that are very interesting and uh, famous white world too. Yeah, you can see uh, we are showing you something about our products. And Melissa is going to speak us about the, this kind of production here in Randazzo. What are the Sicilian or Randazzo best dishes? The typical dishes of Randazzo are ricotta, puff borcellata, which is prepared with short crust, pastry and stuffed, with dried figs, raisins, almonds, etc. Uh, then uh, we have uh, in the Sicilian uh, cannoli, with, uh, uh, which uh, were in Italy produced and consumed at Carnival, uh, but uh, thanks uh, uh, to the enormous success. Uh, they have had, uh, um, they have become the, the most popular a Sicilian dessert in the world. Uh, it is uh, 
um, stuffed with the sheep ricotta cream and uh, uh, can be uh, garnished with uh, cherries, uh, orange peel, chocolate, flakes, uh, chopped pistachios. Another typical dish of our uh, tradition uh, is uh, bucket pasta made with sauce, bechamel and uh, ham uh, eggs. Another excellent specialty uh, is almond pasta. Uh, they are made with sugar, water and Sicilian uh, almonds. Um, we also have taralli which are uh, made with flour, uh, oil, salt uh, and pepper. Uh, let's not forget the Sicilian um, Cassata the Queen of Dessert, uh, made with uh, sponge cake uh, filled with ricotta, uh, cream covered uh, with, with uh, itching. There are many uh, other uh, traditional uh, dishes in Randazzo uh, or in Sicily. Thank you to Melissa and in Arturo's pastisserie, the oldest pastisserie here in uh, Randazzo. And uh, this is a speciality here, cannolo with ricotta, like Melissa said us before. Here we are in uh, our town hall. It's an old town hall uh, built on uh, the rest of an ancient uh, um, monastery of uh, the Order of San Francesco. And it's an important point and meeting point for young people here in Randazzo. And this is uh, Via degli Archi, one of the oldest uh, streets here in Randazzo. It is made up of many arches. This is the, the most one important, named La Bifora. It's not original from here. It was uh, donated here and along this way that uh, is a collector between the town hall and one of the oldest church in Randazzo, the Santa Nicola church, we can see how beautiful it is. And mostly at night when it is lighted and all the lights exalted all the beauty of this arts. Randazzo is an old medieval city, rich of culture and monuments. This one over me is one of the most important and uh, point of view in Randazzo. It's the oldest and more significant monument in Randazzo. But uh, to speak about the statues in Randazzo is here Giuseppe, a student of the first sea of Randazzo. Okay, Giuseppe, what do you know about the Randazzo statue? Giant Piracmone, Randazzo Vecchio. The original nucleus of Randazzo was formed by Greeks, Latins and Lombards. For a long time, the three peoples remained divided and formed three districts. The Latin quarter, San Maria. The Greek quarter, San Nicola. The Lombard quarter, San Marino. The three distra districts joined together to form what is today the history center of Randazzo. This union is represented by a stat statue called Randazzo Vecchio, present in Piazza San Nicola. On the statue of giant Piracomone, there are the symbols of three districts, the lion, f the lion for the Greeks, the snake for the Lombards, and the eagle for the Latins. Monument to the fallen Upupu. His face does not respond to to our sacrifice. Everything will have been useless. This is the phrase engraved in the monument of, of the Ferlen in Randazzo, located in Piazza Loreto, a meeting point for young and old statues of San Giuseppe. It is located in the hill of San Pietro and features Etna. The Randazzesi are devout to San Giuseppe for ranking protect the city from the 1981 lava flow that threatened to destroy the town. The statue was donated by the sculptor Gaetano Arrigo and became the, the patron saint of the city. 
and behind me you can see one of the most active uh, volcano in the world, the Mount Etna. It's really, really uh, active. Uh, in the last days, it, there were many flowers of lava uh, coming down, but not dangerous for a human hill. A, a hill. So now uh, we are going to speak about volcanoes. And uh, here, my students, Natalie, will speak about it to, to us and let hear what she has to say. How many volcanoes does in Sicily exist? Sicily has an enormous natural heritage, made not only of beaches but also of mountains, lakes, parks and volcanoes. In Sicily, Etna and Stromboli are considered active volcanoes. It is an active volcan, frequent eruption and explosion observed approximately every hour. Above sea level, but is egged, can vary because of intense eruption. Etna is a large volcan accompanied by many small secondary volcanoes. Among the many eruptions which began in the previous days with several terremotes, the floors almost reached the two iron dots, aiding on the uh, 23 of the same month. The terrible days, the statue of St. Josephine, patron saint of Rondazzo, was crater on the hill of St. Peter. Many tourists that are coming here ask frequently why uh, is uh, Mount Etna considered uh, not dangerous? Why? We are living here since we were born. So for us, it's normal to see that Etna is an eruption. It's not dangerous. It's rarely that it will be dangerous for human. But here in 1981, as my students said, the lava comes in front of Randazzo and it was quickly uh, in if uh, uh, a miracle wasn't coming. Uh, this miracle, people said, was doing by Saint Joseph that uh, his statue is on the hill of the mount of, of Randazzo. Okay, and now we are here in front of one of the beautiful church in Randazzo, the San Martino church. And uh, as I before said, Randazzo is very famous because it has a lot of church. And to speak about this church, we are calling here Serena, who speaks to us about this. Randazzo is a small medieval village in the province of Catania. Randazzo is also known as the land of the Ande churches, even if no many of them have been destroyed. Among those remaining, the most important are Basilica of Santa Maria, Saint Martino Church, Saint Nicholas Church, Saint Pietro Church and the Annunciata Church. Behind and over me you can see the tower bell of San Martino. It is considered the most beautiful tower bell in Sicily and it was built around the 13th century. It, as you can see, it is built with two different types of stones. During this day, here in this uh, point of the city, in front of the church of San Martino, in the past, there was usual to celebrate Saint uh, Johann Baptist, and in this occasion, there was here a big cattle fair. Now, after more than uh, 100 years, it was reproposed in, the, in, in, a, in a new version, and it will be reproposed here in a few days. Behind my shoulder, you can see the Swabian castle. Now. It is a, a museum, but in the past it was a prison for war prisoner of the medieval time. 